Hi everyone, how's everyone doing here today? Thank you for watching. Uh, sorry for all the recent videos about volunteering, but it's important to get that message across. But this was something entirely different I wanted to talk about, and it's a movie called Dave. Now, for those of you who've never heard of it, um, I don't know the year it came out, it was directed by Ivan Reitman, starring Kevin Klein and Sigourney Weaver. And Klein plays a dual role, where he's the President of the United States, and he also plays a president who runs like a job agency. I haven't seen it in a while, so I might be a little fuzzy on the details, but he has a striking resemblance to the president, and sometimes he does little performances just, you know, because of the resemblance. And I guess he got the eye of the president himself, because he hires him to sit in on this, uh, one of his rallies and everything, just very briefly, so he can go off and be unfaithful to the first lady. And long story short, you know, he suffers a stroke as a result of it. So a corrupt chief of staff hires Dave and says, look, we want you to be the president for a while because, well, the other president, he's kind of preoccupied. Uh, long story short, at first he goes for it gleefully, you know. He's a little nervous and at first he's hesitant, like, are they breaking the law? But they kind of sell him and get him on board and get him to play along. And at one point, you know, He's like a trained seal, like he's going along with it and he thinks he's doing the right thing, but more and more uh, between interactions with the first lady who hates him because they have a bad marriage in their relationship and seeing some of the things that the chief of staff is doing, he's thinking like, wait, this isn't right and I feel like I'm being played here and he starts to turn the tables on, on things. Long story short, he manages to get away with it and because he's such a good natured person, he's like a boy scout and he starts doing like uh, trying to pass uh, legislation based on what he does like creating more jobs helping people because that is what he did in his career and he was the type that if he had a client that was unemployed he'd have trouble sleeping that's how dedicated he was and now I know what some of you are gonna say well that's just a movie if you haven't seen it I would recommend it look it up and you're right it is just a movie uh, could something like that actually really happen no probably not but it's good to suspend your you know you know, let your imagination run wild. That's the whole point of movies. But the one thing he says in there during his speech, and again, even though he's a fictitious character, he says what he learned is part of being president is you got to learn to love your country more than you love yourself. You have to be able to put your country first all the time and then put yourself second. And those were kind of some of the things. The movie's told in kind of like a Frank Capra style, you know, like Mr. Smith goes to Washington if you know you're into some of the old classics but it got me thinking to one thing and even something Roger Ebert said who favored the moving goods results is that it shows that when you have good people in charge a lot of these problems can solve themselves but alas it's never that simple but you can't help but think why can't it be and the point I'm trying to make in today's politics is Donald Trump to this day does not know what it means to be president of the United States. He never did. He doesn't, if you really think about it. I know all the MAGA supporters are going to be like, what are you talking about? He was a president. Yeah, he won the election. Yeah, he carried the title for four years. But he doesn't understand what it means to be president of the United States. One of the former presidents of Mexico, I'm blanking on his name, but he put out a few videos taking jabs at Donald Trump. And he described what it was like when he first became president. And to him, it was like this great honor but also he was kind of nervous because he knows he had to shoulder a lot of responsibilities, but that he was prepared to do that. What did Donald Trump do on his inauguration? Do you remember what he said? Something along the lines like, can you believe it? I'm the president. No, Donald, we can't believe it. We can't believe it that a bunch of people would think it's a good idea to put a reality TV star who has absolutely no governing experience in charge thinking good things were going to happen, and they didn't. It was a disaster. Let's look at some of the things that happened during his presidency. One thing that stood out was he would have these little like group therapy sessions, I like to call them, where he'd get in a room with the vice president, people like Rex Tillerson and some other pretty corrupt individuals. People also with no qualifications other than the fact that they're filthy rich and they're willing to do business with them. Gather around in a table, taking turns, paying him compliments and everything, like basically kissing his ass, you know, it's just like this big circle jerk. It's like, what are you doing? You're at your current age, you need your ego stroke, you need a bunch of people to praise you. At my job, we have similar meetings like that, but it's the exact opposite. Where the chief of our division actually sits down and he does slide presentations showing, look, 
this is what our team has accomplished. This is what you all have done. Look, these are some individuals that really stepped up their game. Like we had this one supervisor did this. We had some of these techni technicians that did this. We had this one developer that won an award. He praises the team. It's not the other way around. He's not looking to get his ego stroke. If anything, he's praising everyone else, ex extending his appreciation. That's part of leadership. That is what it is like being presidential. Let's talk about the rallies. He used to have rallies all during his four years. Why? And most of them were just not things of inspiration or substance, just more of him just Donald Trump being Donald, saying stupid things, putting out lies, saying things that border between racist, misogynistic, crude, and just outright disgusting behavior. Nothing presidential. He even used to mock the idea of being presidential. Bro, that's part of the job. That's what you're there to do. Being president of the United States is doing a job, as Dave said, it is putting your country ahead of you. You have to love your country more than you love yourself. Donald Trump does not love his country. He never did. To him, everything is just a big griff, whatever he can do to enrich himself, keep himself in power, and shine the spotlight on himself. Why is he running now, huh? Is it just because he has any great ideas about healthcare? He had that chance, he failed. What, about infrastructure? He had the chance to do that, he failed. Recently when um, there was hostages brought back under the Biden administration before he passed it on to Kamala, if I'm not mistaken, Donald Trump puts out a tweet where, you know, he says, wow, this never would have happened under me. Yeah, that's because you suck up to authoritarians. They don't respect you. They use you. That should have been a moment where you said, hey, kudos to Biden. This is a win for America. He should have made it about a patriotic stance. Instead, he made it all about himself and his twisted ideas. He even uh, praised Vladimir Putin. Why would you praise somebody who has little or no respect for us, who is not an ally to us, and who has done some pretty horrific things? Same with Kim Jong-un. Donald Trump, he says he doesn't like being laughed at. What do you think Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un are doing? Maybe not to your face, maybe not openly, but in the back, they're like, what a freaking clown this guy is. Do you know what you are to them, Don? You're like a little monkey on a string that they hold up and they dangle a banana and they say, here, come on, get the little banana, but always pull it away from them at the last minute and just laugh. So like, a little pet monkey does anything we say and he says all these good things about us. Hopefully he'll be president again so then uh, Vladimir can do whatever he wants in Ukraine and maybe Kim Jong-un can do a few things too, you know, because we know how much Donald Trump loves um, authoritarians. He wants to be one. He said it himself, dictator, on day one. That is not presidential. Nothing he does is presidential. To this day, he doesn't understand the meaning of carrying that title. Not, even, not just the responsibility of it, but the honor behind it. An honorable president, and I'm not saying every single president up until now has been honorable. We've had a few other duds too. But at least they understood the importance of the title. A really good president would not lie about the election, would not stir up an insurrection, who would uh, pass honor the peaceful transition of power, who when Joe Biden was being inaugurated would actually go there with Obama, with Bush, with Clinton, with uh, Carter, who I believe was there too if I'm not mistaken. And he would shake their hands like a gentleman and play along. That's what you're supposed to do as a former president. That is being presidential. That's what I mean. He doesn't understand it. Frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if Obama, Clinton, and Bush that time, and I, like I said, I'm not sure, but I think Carter was there too that secretly they were saying, you know what, we're glad Trump's not here, we don't want him around. He's not a president to us. He's not a president to me, like I said. You carried the title for four years, but you didn't understand what it was like to be president. You didn't understand the leadership and the responsibility behind it. You pretty much made everything about yourself. Now I know a bunch of maggots are gonna throw out a few good things he did, which they were, I'll admit, but it pales in comparison to all the bad things he did. It doesn't excuse all the bad behavior. He is now a convicted felon. He is still facing criminal charges. A lot of them about stealing documents, which he shouldn't have done, and other things, which I could go on, but they don't want to hear that. They just want to, you know, praise up to their Donald Trump, who says he's going to do all these things, or claim to do all these things. Well, no, not really. Now that I look at his uh, rallies now, it's just all a bunch of fear-mongering. And if you look at the 16 to the present, and even in 2020, it's all the same stuff. It's all the same lies. It's like trying to say, oh, you gotta vote for me because you know I'll get healthcare going. No, you didn't, you tried that. 
because we're going into World War III. That's what you said around Biden, that the economy was going to crash, all these bad things. It didn't happen. You're lying. To a MAGA cult member, they're going to eat all that up. But to the more logical voters that see past the BS, they know it's just, a, you know, just another grifter who wants to be president again to avoid paying, to avoid his criminal charges. That's it. He doesn't care about America. He's not patriotic. In fact, he's about as un-American as can be. And to this day, he does not understand what it means to be president of the United States. He never did. And he never will. And that's the biggest disgrace, which I could even explain that to him, and he still wouldn't get it. Because he's all about crowd sizes and all this other stuff, you know. More lies. Keep lying, Donald, all right? Eventually in time, cult members of yours are going to wake up to it. Some of them won't, I get it, but for the vast majority of America, you're not fooling anyone except yourself. And we're going to vote you out in 2024, and Kamala Harris is going to whip your ass. What then? Tell us, Mr. President, what then? He's got nothing. If anything, he's freaking out, he's losing, and he knows it, so. <sighs> you got a chance to be president of the United States, and now the only thing you can think about is crowd sizes. Anyway, thank you for watching. I really hope you understand.